Hello, my friends, and welcome into another edition of the JMAC Podcast. Please take a minute, like, share, follow, tweet, whatever you need to do to share the fact that we are covering very important topics here on the JMAC Podcast. Today, talking about something that I have been talking about for years, hoping that we could see it happen, and now coming to the forefront as we're watching the Supreme Court make major decisions that are dividing this country, the subject is term limits for the Supreme Court. Now, I know many of you who have followed me, you know that in general, I'm not in favor of term limits, like for Congress and the Senate. And a lot of people hold this against me, but the reason why, just quickly, is because I'm not a fan of punishing the good because you're afraid of the bad. You could have a senator that's doing a bang-up job representing your state, building up seniority, learning all the ropes, and then we say to them, nope, you're out of there because we're afraid this other guy is going to be bad and we're going to get rid of them. I believe term limits are built into the Constitution, and that's called an election and that we decide who we want to be elected based upon those elections. Now, things can change to impact that, like gerrymandering or money involved in elections, but none of those things will uh, improve if you just have term limits. They'll just move on to the next guy and they'll impact the next guy the same way. So for me, the answer is not term limits. Fixing gerrymandering, fixing campaign finance reform, those things are good examples of what you can do instead of term limits. But now let's talk about the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court has a tremendous amount of power. And they were designed so that they wouldn't be politically influenced. And I'm actually really a fan of this. I think it was really uh, a genius part of the Constitution that uh, the the Supreme Court couldn't have influence from the president or from somebody else. But the problem is when the Supreme Court, when people are in power for so long, they have too much impact on the government, in my opinion. Uh, when the Constitution was first established, I mean, what was the common uh, life expectancy? 35 years? 45 years? So if you were nominated to the Supreme Court and you're, you're in your 30s, you might only have an impact on that court for a decade at most. And now we have people on the Supreme Court who could be there for for a generation, for 10, 20, 30, 40 years. And that means a president making a nomination to the Supreme Court, that means that president's influence on the country lasts just as long. And one of the things that the founders, I believe, really wanted was to have a government that could be influenced and run by the people living at the time, of the people, by the people, for the people, alive today not of the people who have died, not of the dead, for the dead, by the dead. And so they wanted a system where, you know, you had a constant refreshing of leadership and ideas so that we don't get stuck in the past and so that we have representatives. And yes, believe it or not, Supreme Court members are our representatives, that they would be up with the times, so to speak. And we don't have that in the Supreme Court right now. And because of that, the nomination process has become one of the most vicious, one of the ugliest processes that we have in this country, one of the most partisan, hate-filled, uh, just just awful processes that we have is the Supreme Court nomination process. Now, I believe that that could be changed with term limits for uh, the Supreme Court. Now, there's another idea floating around, and that is packing the Supreme Court. 
because the Constitution doesn't say how many uh, Supreme Court justices there should be. And so the idea is that a president could, like Joe Biden, can just start nominating new members of the Supreme Court until he gets his liberal majority. And then the next president would come along, and if that's a Republican, they could pack the court, and they could put their people, and then they could have a majority, and next thing you know, the Supreme Court has two, three hundred people on it. So that's what people are talking about when they talk about, you know, packing the Supreme Court. There's another way to pack the Supreme Court, and we saw Republicans do this, and that's use shenanigans to not allow a sitting president to get their nomination through. Remember Mitch McConnell when Obama put in Merrick Garland as a nominee for the Supreme Court? He made up this non-existent rule that a president cannot make a, a nomination to the Supreme Court on the last, in the last term of office. This was absolutely ridiculous. I believe it was corrupt. And I believe that it should not have been allowed and that anybody who participated in it should have been thrown out of office through the electoral process. And then, of course, when the, 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 when it turns around and it's Trump's last year in office, they rushed through and they put their nominee through. So how you could have any faith or confidence in what this group of people believes is a bunch of nonsense. And of course, they do this because they know that that nominee is going to be there for decades and decades and decades. Well, if you had uh, limitations on that, if you had term limits on the Supreme Court, then I believe a lot of that pressure would be relieved. And maybe we can get back to a better way of of choosing who uh, these leaders should be. And the good news is, I'm not uh, the only one who feels this way. Take a look at this. This was in the Deseret.com. Two thirds of Americans support term limits for Supreme Court justices. Hey, some people actually agree with me. Uh, It says about two thirds of US adults support term limits or a mandatory retirement age for Supreme Court justices. That's an interesting idea too, Uh, but I like term limits better. Um, According to the Associated Press uh, Center for Public Affairs Research Poll, the Supreme Court's approval has fallen this year. Hmm, I wonder why. And many are supportive of reforms. The poll conducted after recent rulings on abortion And guns found 67% of U.S. adults support term limits for justices and 64% support a mandatory retirement age. Pollsters also asked about increasing the size of the court. This was the least popular reform, which was supported, thankfully, by just 34% of the people. Democrats are most likely to support term limits or a mandatory retirement age for justices. Uh, Unsurprising, considering the court's current six to three conservative advantage, but majorities of Republicans agree with them. The poll found that 57% of Republicans back term limits and 56% are in favor of a mandatory retirement age. Uh, 31 states and the District of Columbia uh, already have some form of mandatory retirement. So states have already seen the value in this, often at the age of 70. This according to a bipartisan Presidential Commission report on court reforms published last year. The report found the U.S. is, listen to this, the only major constitutional democracy without a retirement or term limits for its court justices. In Canada, which also has nine members, Supreme Court judges are required to retire at age 75. The U.S. Supreme Court today is relatively young, 
Clarence Thomas is the oldest. He's 74. Samuel Alito is 72. Sonia Sotomayor is 68. Uh, John Roberts is 67. Elena Kagan, 62. Brett Kavanaugh, 57. Neil Gorsuch is 54. Katanji Brown Jackson is 51. And Amy Coney Barrett is 50. I would like to see uh, the number that I've heard that I like. And I don't know why I like it. Uh, it's just a nice round number. 18 years. Two decades at the most. Um, but I can see myself even supporting fewer than that. Um, but if you had it on a rotating, you know, timeline or, or even set it up in a system where each president got one nomination to the Supreme Court. And that was part of their that was part of their duty or abilities. And I haven't done the math on how that that would work out. Um, what I know is that that would re release the tension that we feel during Supreme Court nominations, and I believe it would keep the court much more up to date with the needs and the sentiments of. Uh, the population as a whole. So I am a huge fan of term limits for the Supreme Court. I'm glad to know I'm not alone. I'd love, as always, to know what you think. Leave it in the comments. Do you think that the Supreme Court should have term limits or age limits? Again, I like term limits because if it's an age limit, you could get in there at 45 and you'd be there a long, long time. So uh, term limits are the way to go for me. Let me know what you think. In the meantime, please like, share, subscribe, tweet, whatever you need to do. Get up on your rooftops with a megaphone and let everybody know about this show. And also go to the link below, jmcfarland.com. Become a member of the JMAC Members Club. You get great perks for that, but it really honestly is just going to keep this show on the air uh, streaming and all of the things that I use to record this program, they take money. So you can just, that's what it's, we're talking about. We're not talking about me getting rich. We're just talking about helping me pay the bills to get this broadcast to you on a regular basis. With that, thank you. And I hope you have a wonderful day.